This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tuluagola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself and experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So, it was that Holy Spirit in fellowship with the human spirit by reason of his residence in the confines of the human spirit that brought perspective to the witness of God and that was what was written out as scriptures. It means that the Bible is a hallowed text. But that's not all. Paul now tells Timothy that all scriptures are not just God breathed. All scriptures are profitable. It means that if you engage the word of God, there are certain layers of advantage that you will come into. What I'm actually doing is to attempt to properly initiate a journey into unified existence. That's what I'm doing. Now all of us go back to scriptures and we begin to engage because God is saying to me that there's something he wants to achieve for us as a house and for those who are connected to us in this season by the engagement of the word there is one of one of these four layers of profiteering that he wants to be intentional about in this season so you find out that my subject is what speeches that reproof so he says that all scriptures are, are given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof the now emphasis of God to us as a house is that God wants to use the word to bring us into a kind of prophet called reproof I'm going to peep into it for correction and for instruction in righteousness so what is doctrine because if we don't define the prophet, it's possible that anything that comes to comes out of scripture is called teaching. Are you with me? So what is doctrine? Doctrine or true doctrine is simply the teaching, the communication of godly education. And I'm raising the bar. Because what you may call teaching may just be a mental explanation of scriptures. And that one doesn't bring profit. It has to be godly. If scripture was by inspiration, then the administration for, is for information, for education must also be spiritual. So it's godly teaching godly teaching in trying to calibrate godly teaching as different from just mental teaching of scriptures we can use the feedback the product so i wrote here i said true doctrine when understood changes attitudes and behaviors when understood not when heard it means the labor of the teacher must be to produce understanding that's the job of a teacher the study of the doctrines i'm reading so that we can move faster the study of the doctrines of the gospel are designed to improve behavior quicker than the psychological study of behaviors why do people behave like this okay it's because they're under pressure it's because there's no money in the nation so that's why they are depressed I'm saying that biblical teaching can exit from this depression faster than the tables of a psychologist. And one of the reasons is because it has the ability, when understood, to penetrate deep into the fabric of your behavioral pattern. Exposure to scriptures can break a habit. Exposure to scriptures can adjust how you treat people around you. It can communicate a new set of attitudes to you just because you submitted yourself 
to the teaching of scriptures it means if there's something you are listening to that is not producing a change of attitude a change of behavior and we need to look for another name for it because this is what doctrine works out in men our focus is reproof and i'll come to that to that last another byproduct of scripture is correction and i did a little study let me not bore you with greek words but i found out that this word correction as used in the bible literally means to straighten up it is used with the with the perception that the one who approaches into scriptures is crooked is bent but when you come to scriptures the bible itself by engagement has the ability when understood to make a crooked man straight and that's what correction is that's what correction is the fourth one is instruction in righteousness it indicates that when we engage the word of god we come into an educational system that develops not just our minds but even our morals when a man who is exposed to scripture begins to behave you will find out that the degree of his meekness the degree of his humility the degree of his straightforwardness if there's such a concept like that the degree of his honesty cannot be produced by home training because even morals even morals his civil behaviors in the midst of other people are drawn from scriptures instructions in righteousness it means the things that you the things that is taught they produce a man who operates at a requisite layer when it comes to moral standards so the word righteousness here means moral standards the ability to discern what is right and what is wrong during the week somebody sent me a message a minister I perceive they are trying to design to build something or to or to buy something and he said sir I want to ask you is it right is it really true okay I'll ask your question now what is right what is true he said that um, in trying to fund things in the house of God is it really true that God does not use any kind of money is it true that God cannot just use anybody to advance his work because a minister told him that when they were trying to furnish their building how God helped them was that a Yahoo boy was attached to them and the Yahoo boy stewarded the finances that that built the structure so and the man told him that it was God that helped them he came not as Gabriel he came in the shape of a Yahoo boy and used the Yahoo business money so what prayer will the church pray for the guy say oh god rose by him rose by him for <laughs> ah, mm. the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the that's where scripture comes in you will have found patterns you will have found that direct utterances in scriptures that advise against that part of travel because there was a man in scripture who was not a yahoo man but who had access to forbidding sheep and goats by the name saul and that's how they used to call saul 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 was a crisis king because on a normal day the tribe of Benjamin would not have produced a king. It was the error of Judah that um, 
that gave him an opportunity because if Israel has wait, had waited a little longer David would have been their king but in the ninth generation they made a demand for a king out of timing not knowing that there was an utterance that Israel's first king called Moses had pronounced that the bastard will not be a prince among the people of God unto the tenth generation David was the tenth man so in the ninth generation the generation of Jesse they asked for a king and because God wanted to answer them according to their hearts he went out of that tribe and gave them a king from the tribe of Benjamin so by divine order Jonathan had no place in the throne because his father was a stopgap his father was the product of a of, of a an ill-timed craving are you with me so this man goes to war not knowing that and the mortal dimension was looking for every legitimate opportunity to remove him are you with me so they went after the Amalekites and God said kill everything and people are still contending why God said kill everything because there were women and children there so the man now remember that ah, our God needs needs goats and rams and so he decided to keep those things and God came to him and said Oh God, uh, what sound am I hearing there? Oh, you say, my God, my God desires worship. Someone now spoke on behalf of God. Ah, don't you know that with this God, obedience is greater than sacrifice? Because God is not just a God of, or a God of ends, He's also a God of means. I know that if you scored an A, you can testify. But when the church is discerning, we can peep into your A to find out if Jesus did it, oh my God, or it was John that you copied, or it was Naira or dollars that you paid, or it was that because you did not have cash, you paid in kind, seller. Because many times people force God to take glory for what he did not do. And the church dances around error. It was at that point that heaven began to sustain a legitimate reason to send this guy away. Instruction that produces a life that meets up with the mark of accurate existence in God. This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Brace yourself for an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode.